So let's take a look at the voltage test and see how we measure voltage using the digital multimeter. Start the test by inserting the black meter lead in the jack marked COM for common. Our black lead will always be placed in the common jack. On the left is a jack mark for volts and ohms. That's where we'll put our red meter lead. The next thing we have to do is set the meter to read DC volts. And here we've set it to the two volt range because the battery's voltage is only around a volt and a half. There are three batteries in this Williams video game that maintain the bookkeeping information. And they're installed in these battery holders right down here on the computer board. And they just slide in pretty easily, just like this. To measure the voltage of the battery, we'll take the red meter lead and touch it to the positive terminal of the battery and the black meter lead to the negative terminal of the battery. We can read the voltage right off the meter, approximately 1.3 volts. Of course, you won't be measuring the voltage of a battery nearly as often as you'll be measuring the 5 volt power supply in the game. That 5 volt power supply is really important. All of the computers in all of the games you work on require an exactly regulated 5 volt power supply to operate. In fact, it can only vary maybe, oh, a quarter of a volt either way. If the voltage drops down below 4.75 volts, or if it goes above 5.25 volts, the computer may malfunction. In fact, it may not work at all. There are other voltages as well. For instance, in the Defender game, there's a positive 12 volt power supply and even a minus 5 volt supply. That's right. We can have negative power supplies in a game just as often as we can see positive power supplies. Both supplies work approximately the same way. The only difference is that in a negative power supply, the flow of current is reversed. We'll measure both those power supplies, positive and negative, the same way with our meter. To make it easier for you to test the power supplies in a game, many manufacturers are now installing test points right on their printed circuit boards. Well, this makes your job real simple. For instance, here on this Tempest printed circuit board by Atari, there's a test point marked GND for ground. And we'll connect our black meter lead to this test point. There's also a 5 volt test point on the printed circuit board. And it's right here, right next to this red LED that is glowing to indicate that we do have the 5 volts to the printed circuit board. With the meter set to the 20 volt range and the red and black leads in place, we can see the meter reads exactly 5 volts. All games require a 5 volt power supply to operate and a pinball machine is no different. In this pinball machine, the 5 volt test point is seen here. It's labeled test point 5 right on the printed circuit board. And with the red lead on the test point, we can read the voltage right off the meter, 5 volts. Don't forget to put your black lead on ground, like the ground braid or the special ground test point. Well, even if your game doesn't have 5 volt test points or ground test points, there's still a real easy way that you can check the 5 volts going to the computer board. Do you see how all the integrated circuits on the board are arranged in rows? And do you see how there's this heavy printed circuit board trace running up and down each side of the rows of chips? Well, one of these traces, or power rails as they're called, carries the 5 volts to all the ICs, and one carries the ground. By placing the meter leads across the power rails, we can read the voltage directly across it. And here we see that it's real close to 5 volts. It doesn't matter which lead you put where. If you accidentally reverse the meter leads, the meter will simply show a negative voltage. So you see, with the digital multimeter, you don't have to worry about accidentally reversing the leads. We can measure the voltage of alternating current just as easily as we can measure the voltage of a direct current source like a battery or a power supply. But instead of setting our meter to read DC volts, we'll set it to read AC volts. Say, for instance, we wanted to measure the voltage from a floor receptacle. Well, we know that that voltage is somewhere around 120 volts AC. So we'll set our meter to the 200 volt AC range. With the meter set on 200 volts and the red and black leads inserted into the AC receptacle here, we can measure the voltage and read it right off of the meter. In this case, it shows 117 volts. If I were to accidentally set the meter too low, say on the 20 volt range, the meter reads OL. 
Well, OL stands for overload, but that doesn't mean that I'm hurting the meter in any way at all. It simply means that the input voltage coming into the meter through the red and black leads here is higher than the setting here on the selector knob. In fact, I can actually rotate the selector knob through all of the ranges, including the resistance range, without fear of damaging the meter. The meter is fully protected or idiot-proofed against all kinds of accidental high voltage overloads. Well, if this were a conventional analog or needle type of meter, you'd see little wisps of smoke coming out of the back of the meter, and you could watch the needle peg to the right as the meter instantly destroyed itself. In this case, we don't have to worry about it because of that overload protection circuit that's built right into the meter.